Welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technologies. Today we're going to be taking a look at this PNY CS1100 series solid state drive. So I picked up the solid state drive to replace the traditional hard drive in my desktop computer. Um, I originally I had a Seagate 250GB 7200 RPM uh, standard hard drive which was pretty slow. Uh, it took about probably three minutes to boot up into the desktop and then after that it had to load all the background applications. So I was getting fed up with it um, and especially while using Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Dreamweaver, um, it was getting on my nerves. So I eventually <laughs> just gave up on the hard drive and I had to splurge and buy a solid, well had to, I wanted to buy a solid state drive. Um, this, and this seemed like a really good option. I read reviews, had great reviews, um, 480 gigabytes for 150 bucks. It's probably the cheapest solid state drive out on the market right now, or at least the cheapest one I could find. Uh, really great value. I'm using it right now on my desktop system, and that was a complete struggle, and I'll tell you all about that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do a voiceover. I was too excited, so I went ahead and unboxed it already. Uh, and did the benchmark so I could put it in this system because this system is only equipped with SATA 2 and my laptop is equipped with SATA 3 so I had to put it in my laptop and then transfer it over to my desktop and it was just a pain. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get to the voiceover too in just a minute. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. First things first, let's go ahead and pop this solid state drive out of its box. Alright, so it seems to be covered by a outer layer with all the information on it. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that off and we can see um, all of these specifications and everything for the hard drive on that. And of course, I'm going to um, take some HD images and blow them up here so you guys can read everything on that. But first, let's go ahead and take uh, the solid state drive out of this little black box. Opening the box, we can see a 2.5 inch spacer. Personally, I never really use these, so I just toss these aside and put them in storage, but it does come with one if you are one of those people that find a use for them. Pulling the solid state drive out, we can see it's packed inside some foam and wrapped in a nice little anti-static bag. Putting that aside, let's go ahead and dig deeper into the box. We can find more foam, and really that's about it. That's weird that doesn't come with a user manual um, or any sort of cables or anything like that, but I didn't expect it to because it didn't say on the box, but usually I get a nice surprise when I buy my drives. Um, I'm just used to it. Uh, usually they'll include something additional like a warranty manual or at least a SATA cable or something like that. So really the only thing that's coming with this is the solid state drive itself and the 2.5 inch spacer. If you're looking at the front of the solid state drive right now, let's go ahead and pull it out of its little anti-static baggie which it is tucked <laughs> away in. So now you can get a better look at the drive itself. It appears to be made out of some sort of metal, probably either aluminum or steel. It has a really nice weight to it and a really nice feel. It feels really well built. Um, and I am comparing this to the King Spec drive that I bought a while ago because that is the most recent solid state drive that I bought besides this one. Um, and that one obviously felt really cheap. This solid state drive blows that thing out of the water. Um, and it looks really nice as well. You can see the contacts now for the power and SATA. Um, I showed you the back a while ago. I'll also post a HD image of that. And right now I'm just going to show you guys a couple more shots of the drive so you can get a better idea of what exactly you are getting. Um, obviously looks aren't everything, so we're going to throw it in my laptop as I said earlier, which does have SATA 3 on it and benchmark it. Um, but there are just a couple things I really love about this. The first one um, is the texture. I absolutely love the uh, textured gradient they did with this. Um, and then on the front, the uh, flashing Cigna uh, that says PNY in the CS11 solid state drive also looks cool. I feel like a lot of people would probably rip that off though because it's a bit too flashy. Um, but I personally think it looks neat. So let me reiterate this again. For $150, this drive feels absolutely solid. Now let's go ahead and check out if it performs the same way. All right, so the drive is installed inside my ASUS G75 gaming PC. Let's go ahead and run some benchmarks using Crystal Disk Mark version 4.03. And I am gonna bump up the speed just a little bit um, so we don't have to wait through this because I wanna show you guys the entire benchmark process but I don't wanna take forever and I don't wanna use a bunch of memory when making this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the speed up a little bit and I'll get back to you when we are done.
And the results are in. I'm actually on the Amazon page right now to see what the advertised read and write speeds for this drive are because I couldn't remember off the top of my head and I'm reading it off right now. So I'll throw that up on the screen. Um, advertised read speeds for the 480 gigabyte model. Um, sequential read speeds are um, 460 megabytes per second. That's reading. And then uh, writing speeds are clocked in at 415 megabytes per second. So what did we end up getting? Well, it appears our controller like the uh, Q32 T1 test just a bit better, so I'm thinking I'm going to rely off that. Um, but our read speed was um, at 433.6 megabytes per second, which is actually pretty close. Um, and the write speed is actually above um, the advertised write speed, which is 400, or the advertised write speed is 415 megabytes per second, and we achieved 422.2 megabytes per second using the sequential uh, Q32 T1 write and read test. Now let's go ahead and check out the random read and write speeds of this drive. On Amazon, it's advertised that this particular model can achieve 71,000 input output operations per second. Uh, that's reading, and then it can write up to 73,000 input-output operations per second. So let's go ahead and go back to the video. I'm not on it right now, so let me go ahead and see. Um, and I'm going to have to do the math because obviously this is in megabytes per second. I'm going to have to convert it to input-output operations per second. So I'm going to do the math real quick. And I am back with that. So in total for our read speeds, uh, we got 72,960 input output operations per second. So a bit, just a bit higher than the uh, specified rating. And then for our write speeds, our write speeds are just around, wait for it, 75,000 input output operations per second. So as far as performance go, this drive is definitely sitting higher than expected. But what happens when we increase the transfer size? Currently, we're only using one gigabyte of transfer. But what happens when we bump that up to 32 gigabytes? Will the specifications stay the same? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Okay, so give or take about 2 megabytes per second, pretty much everything came out the same, except for the sequential read speeds. Not the uh, sequential Q32 T1 test, but the um, other sequential uh, read speeds that we weren't really paying attention to because it appears the other one is more accurate. But for some reason, when we transfer 32 gigabytes, um, it actually increased from the 312 megabytes that we saw earlier to 407.5 megabytes per second. Uh, and that's really interesting. I'm not really sure why that happened or how that came about, uh, but that is a huge difference. So not really sure what's going on there, even though we weren't really paying attention to that rating to begin with. That's definitely a mystery. So if you have any ideas, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. After looking at all the benchmarks, you can see that the solid state drive is a pretty good value. There are some solid state drives within the same price range, such as the Samsung 850 Evo, which is about $50 more expensive than this solid state drive, uh, that will give you better performance. I think the 850 Evo probably gives around 500 megabyte read and write speeds. Close to that, that's off the top of my head because I was shopping earlier. I think it's around 500. With this build and this upgrade, Speed didn't really matter. It wasn't a big deal to me. But if you're someone that relies on speed, if you're a gamer that's just really impatient or something like that, I'm trying to think of another application, but I can't. Uh, it might be worth the extra $50 to buy a slightly faster solid state drive, such as the Samsung 850 Evo, um, because you're going to be living with that for a long time. But if you're someone like me who didn't really care about speed, um, I just wanted something faster than the traditional hard drive and I, that I had in my PC. And this is a lot faster, by the way. I'm going to show you guys that in just a minute. I would, I would go with something like the PNY CS1100 series. Before this video ends, I would like to perform a couple demonstrations, one of them being the boot time of the system. Uh, before when I had the traditional hard drive installed inside this computer, it took about three minutes, and I'm not kidding, three minutes to get to the login screen. With this solid state drive, it takes probably around 10 seconds. So I'm gonna time it right now to um, actually verify that. So I'm gonna boot up my computer. I don't wanna count the power on self test in the time trial. And then I'm going to open the timer on my phone. And then I have it set to hang at the Windows 7 selection screen. Okay. So I'm going to start timing it now. <laughs> and 
And this is a pretty rough estimate, but it should give you a general idea of how fast this drive is. Yeah, so it took about 13 seconds to get to the login screen. And then to get to the desktop, it's pretty much instantaneous. Um, and then as well as loading all my background programs, it's like that. So, I mean, the gadgets are already up on the top right corner of my secondary monitor. My antivirus software is already loaded up. Everything is good to go at this point. I think earlier in the video, I said I was going to tell you guys this, so I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway, um, even if I didn't. Uh, when I first installed this drive onto this computer, I had to clone everything from the old hard drive onto the new hard drive because I didn't want to have to deal with reinstalling the operating system because, uh, I don't know, the driver, CDs, or God knows where. Uh, and I don't know what utilities I have exactly on this PC to make it work as smooth it is, as it does. Um, so I did not want to have to deal with reinstalling everything. So I used Clonezilla to clone the drives, and when I did that, just using the standard settings, for some reason, it would not clone my old hard drive to the solid state drive. I have no clue why. Couldn't figure it out. Well, actually, I did figure it out, but uh, I don't really know what I did exactly. Um, so I just messed with a bunch, of, a bunch of settings, and eventually, I got the drive to clone over to the solid state drive, and everything worked just fine. But... If we go into my computer, the drive is formatted um, as the same size as the other drive. And this is actually the 480 gigabyte model of the uh, PNY CS 1100 series solid state drive. But it's only reading it as a 250 gigabyte hard drive, which is the size of my, the size of my old hard drive. So I'm not sure why exactly it did that. It's not really a big deal to me, so I'm not gonna fix it until I need the space. Um, so, and it's gonna be a while before I fill up that another 100 gigabytes of uh, storage. But I'm not really sure why or what settings I chose to get Clonezilla to do that. Anyway, that was the tale of my struggle. It took a couple hours just to clone the hard drive and it was a real pain in the butt. Um, so let's go ahead and move on and try a couple other things on this PC. I have the uh, Adobe CS6 Masters Collection on my computer. And one big complaint that I had with my last hard drive is that it took forever to open Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Dreamweaver. It just took probably uh, a minute and 30 seconds. It was really painful sitting through um, the opening process. But now, if I double click on it, It takes a mere probably about uh, 8 to 10 seconds, so that's pretty good. And then Adobe, uh, Adobe, Adobe Dreamweaver takes about the same as well. As you can see, that was a bit quicker. Um, so definitely a huge performance increase with this PC thanks to the solid state drive. So to sum everything up, with its price tag of $150, this is a great solid state drive for anyone on a budget. It's built solid, it has a great warranty, and it looks very, very nice. And on top of all that, you're getting some pretty nice speeds out of this solid state drive. That's going to be about it for this little overview. I hope I answered any and all of your questions. But if you do have something to ask, please leave a comment in the comment section and I will get to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to like this video. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.